In this tutorial, we will create a project showing historical alarm lists and historical trends on the back of PLC. Um, they can be used both on a, such a low-cost embedded microbrowser panel as well as uh, on any standard HTML5 browser. Here we see the same project running as HTML5 in a standard browser. The target system is a Beckhoff PLC uh, CX8090, so it's the smallest of the C series. Historical trend and alarm logging is possible with spider control on any uh, Beckhoff PLCs that start with a C, so uh, this is a real wide range um, using this powerful feature. On the other page, we have this uh, trend uh, display. We will load. Uh, the trend, the historical recordings from the PLC, and we are now able to um, to zoom in and out and go into details. How is this uh, done? How is the programming procedure to do so? Uh, historical alarming and trending um, needs two sides. We have on the one hand the, the logger on the PLC, which will uh, record um, all these values. And on the other hand, we have uh, the user interface, um, a control that is able to display um, these recordings. First thing we uh, will do um, on our main flowchart in the start page, we will configure uh, the logger to do our alarms and uh, trends. We begin with alarm configuration. So alarm configuration is done by choosing um, the respective uh, variable from the PLC, adding um, a condition for which uh, the alarm will be active. Um, the alarms are every alarm has, has a, its own alarm ID, so it starts with one, two, three, etc. Uh, we can add a condition when it goes on and when it goes off, and condition can uh, be can test on bits or can uh, compare if a value is greater or lesser and so on. So this will be our configuration and the logger will um, as soon as it has uh, received such a configuration start with um, logging these alarms. What is important about our technology is that it is uh, flash memory friendly so uh, the alarm logging should not uh, write constantly to the flash file system, otherwise it would be damaged. So uh, what we do here is uh, we record the new e incoming events to a RAM buffer and only when the buffer is full um, it will be written in one complete file. What we can define here is the size of every log file the size of one buffer uh, that has to be reached before it's written to the flash file system and the number of files that we want to use for our alarm um, recording. So with this configuration we have it under, under full control that uh, the, the flash file system will not be overwritten. Um, the size of, of all of the alarm history will, will remain uh, constant and write operations to the file system will, will not have uh, happen very often. The same procedure is used for uh, trend recordings. We have also a concept of uh, using this uh, buffer and log files for each trend. Um, we indicate uh, the PPO name, the process point name that shall be recorded we can indicate uh, the period in which the recording takes place. So um, a, no, a value of 1 means uh, 1 per second. If I choose 120, this means the re record is being made every 2 minutes. And we also have the possibility to trigger um, on a constant sampling rate or on a hysteresis base uh, so hysteresis means if the value changes by 0 point something, 
um, then a sample will be taken um, in depending on, on the nature of the values that should be recorded this can uh, cause a much lower memory footprint when doing uh, re rec uh, records like that. So every trend has a number and it will be identified by the user interface through this number. We'll now go on creating our um, user interface to display our records we will choose um, the respective object from the library so we have in the general library uh, subfolders for al alarming and trending there is a um, simple alarm uh, display type or a more sophisticated alarm we will choose the simple one um, there is three subtypes, so we have um, typically the history online type that is, is mostly used. This will show online um, upcoming alarms and allows us to scroll back in history um, to display older events. And it's also able to, to filter online um, for uh, active alarms or acknowledged alarms or uh, for alarm uh, ID ranges. Um, the definition online type will uh, sort the alarms um, uh, with their IDs so it will show that um, alarm ID 1 has arrived already um, 10 times and showing the last timestamp. And the history offline alarm trend will load the complete history uh, from the server to the client, allowing the client to, to save this alarm as a CSV file uh, for documentation. So if we choose now the alarming history online type, this will add the macro and open this configuration dialog. Um, we can simply press OK to the configuration and the object is, is already set, it will work like that. Um, there are options which m may be uh, modified if necessary so we can choose which columns that should be displayed if we want to see it, uh, the ID number, uh, the alarm text, time on, time off or acknowledged state. We can set filters to show uh, oldest or newest alarms first. We can filter for uh, active or inactive alarms, uh, for acknowledged or not acknowledged alarms etc. And we can set um, the colors for the different states. So the alarm list object um, looks like this. The, the second thing um, that we would like to do is to um, define the alarm texts. So Spider Control is able to um, change the language during runtime so the alarm text will be stored together with all the other um, language dependent resources in our CSV file um, so we have a CSV file for every language uh, that is supported by your application and we can here add the alarm text in the respective language Okay, so this is how alarm configuration is made. We will now switch over to trending. The trend macros can be configured accordingly. We will open the macro library, go to general trend, and here we have three main groups of trend objects. What you uh, would like to use mostly is this offline trend type. These objects will load uh, historical recordings from the controller and display it. We have uh, an online trend uh, macro which is only connected to a variable, to a PPO on the PLC and we have the offline sa saved trend macros which are able to load a CSV file locally from a hard disk. So we'll commence with uh, the offline trend minimal object which is the most easy way to uh, configure a trend. We'll double click and find this macro offline trend um, object in this list. 
which opens this dialog with another uh, double click. We're now able to uh, configure our trend recordings that um, we have already uh, prepared for sorting on the PLC. We will add now the three uh, records on our PLC, give them different colors. Track number two, add, and track number three in red. We can configure the default um, range of the y-axis. We can switch on or off um, the axis description. And now the object is set. As soon as we have added uh, the trend records, it is, we can use it as an offline viewing object. Um, all of these macros are themselves built uh, as from uh, different simple spider control objects. So if you would like to modify uh, the functionality or the look and feel of this object, this can be done very easily by just ungrouping it and accessing each one of these objects which is used there. So we see this is just one simple um, button which can be regrouped, which can be modified uh, in terms of uh, displaying um, a different uh, a different vector graphic for instance um, we can remove uh, all of these options if this seems to be too complicated and resize the object at will we just have to regroup again it again uh, and can resize and, and can uh, adapt the object at your own needs. Going back online, our trend control uh, allows us to load uh, data which is stored on the PLC and we can also use this uh, load advanced options to modify the range so instead of loading all data which is stored on the PLC we can choose a date picker and say okay we want to have um, only half of this month's data to be loaded or we want to have the, the last hour or the last day or uh, we want to load the first few moments of the re record.